Well, grace and peace unto you today. Uh, thank the Lord for another day that he has created, which is a day called Sunday. It's a day that we've never seen before, and I'm excited about uh, today's broadcast and thanking God for you taking the time to be a part of the broadcast today. Uh, my name is uh, Ronald G. Hurston Sr. Uh, the name of our ministry is called Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, where we're providing knowledge to build a people with a heart after God. So I thank God for you as, again, being a part of the broadcast. I'm hoping that you get something out of the Word of Faith today that we're going to be sharing with you that I think is designed to help encourage you in your walk, in your relationship with the Lord. And I just thank God for you being a part of the uh, broadcast, as I said. So you might want to get your Bible at this time or your uh, electronic devices, whatever it is that you may use uh, as we follow along in the Scripture. Uh, I'm just thankful once again for... Uh, uh, this day, and I'm thankful for those who are part of Kingdom Faith International Christian Center and those who have been partnering with us. Thank you so much for uh, your seeds of offering financial support that you've been giving us, as well as prayers. Uh, both of them are very, very important uh, for what we're doing in the scheme of things and what God has also blessed us to do in the future. So again, uh, we just thank you once again for being a part of the broadcast, and I'm hoping and praying that you get a lot out of the Word of Faith today. So what we're going to do at this time, I'm going to uh, pray, and then after I pray, um, we're going to also get right into the word that we have for you today. Also, I want to bring to your attention that in the comment section, uh, you should see I gave, I gave a scriptural uh, path, the scriptures that we'll be following today, so you can look at them a little later in your own time that you may need uh, to be able to, um, you know, just to go over the word of God and, and get it in your spirit, because that's what we need to do. We need to get it from our hearts to our minds and uh, and not only that, but put it in a way that we're walking it out in Jesus' name. All right, well, let's pray. Father, we just want to thank and give you praise for those who are here on part of the broadcast today. We're excited about the word of faith that you've given us. Uh, we yield ourselves to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take this vessel of clay, use it for the glory of God to instruct, to encourage, to inform uh, your people, or even to bring correction if necessary, so we can begin to walk by faith and not by sight. So we thank you for all those who are part of the broadcast today, and we ask in Jesus' name that you just have your way and allow the Holy Spirit to open up our eyes to the truth of your word. And this we pray, this we ask in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. All right. So today, uh, what we're talking about is uh, part three. This is part three. And what we've been talking about is being a part of the family of God, the family of God. So that's what we're going to be talking about. This is part three today. Family of God. If you didn't get a chance to listen to one or two, uh, it's already in the Facebook. Uh, you can actually go to Facebook and just pull it back up last week's message and the week before that, because this word is really designed. I mean, my prayer time, God just told me to remind people that we're part of the family of God, uh, being born again, being saved and placed in the family of God. And uh, that's important for us to know as believers. Uh, because what God wants to do is help us to make sure that we're drawing the right information from where we've been born in, because that's important. Uh, so there's a lot of things we've covered. I'm not going to be able to cover today uh, that we talked about. That's why I'm encouraging you to look at the lesson that we talked about, the family of God. This is part three. So uh, in that, we talked about uh, uh, this, uh, that we're part of the household of faith, uh, the household of God, I'm sorry. We're part of the household of God, because that's what the scripture says in Ephesians chapter number two, verses 19 through 22. It says that we're a part of the household of God, the household of God. And in first Peter two and nine, it says that we're part of a royal family. I mean, all these things are exciting when you take ownership to believe what God says about you. Remember, our faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but it should stand in the power of God concerning his word. And the New Testament truth is also says that. We're also the household of faith. So the household of faith that's found in Galatians chapter number six and verse number 10. And then lastly, we talked about that we are under God's workmanship. Amen. Ephesians two and verse number 10. Um, now, we, we said all that because one of the things that we mentioned about that we want to piggyback on concerning what we talked about last week is that we, we have also found being a part of uh, God's family that we are blessed only to be regulated. And that statement is a powerful statement because sometimes um, most people don't get the greater understanding about what's required of us once we become a part of God's family or the family of God. And yes, we're blessed, but we're blessed also 
to be regulated. And that word regulated is a powerful word because uh, we're talking about in the natural, if you uh, grow up in a natural family, you have parents. The parents are designed to govern the child, not to control or police the child. And the same aspect is in terms of God. God, when we get in the family of God, being born in the family of God, then God blesses us, but then also he reminds us that we have to be regulated. So that regulating with the right perception is that he's not trying to police us, but he's trying to govern us. And that's important. So here uh, we talked about being blessed only to be regulated. Govern, the word govern has to deal with a conduct of policy, a conduct of policy of actions and affairs of a governing country. And remember we talked about the kingdom of God is a governing influence of a king over a territory, impacting it with power, principles, laws, values, morals, producing a community of citizens reflecting the culture and the lifestyle of the king. Now, we know that we're the territory that God rules over because it's Christ in you now, the hope of glory. And because he's in you, you're blessed because of Christ. So now he requires for us out of submission or obedience to learn how to live according to his will. Not our will, but his will. And that's where the challenge is because a lot of people get born again and get saved and get in the local assembly and they still haven't changed their will to God's will. And I always say this, that the will of God is the word of God. So you never find out what God's will is till you find his word. The other challenge is we have to make sure that we're getting the will of God out of the right dispensation, the dispensation of truth, because there's two dispensations there more than two dispensations. Truth of dispensation means when God put his finger in time and makes an emphasis that he's trying to allow us to have understanding, but he doesn't want us to park it there because revelation is always progressive. And what I mean by that, God is bringing us into more truth and more revelation of who he is and what he requires for us as believers. And I said this before, which is a true statement. There's some things I found out in the word of God I'm just not, I don't like. <laughs> and there's some things I'm just not in agreement with but it doesn't, it's not my will, but it's his will that needs to be done. So remember, God's will is never forced upon us because God thinks like a parent. So therefore, he's trying to help us yield our will to his will. And that's what we call the renewing of the mind. So here we want to talk about um, something that's very, very important. Uh, because we, when we understand that we're in the body of Christ, we're part of the family of God, we've been blessed now. And now he requires for us to live according to his will. Now, moving from a positional stand, because the positional stand, a lot of people want to stand in the positional stand of what Christ has done for us, which is a good thing. And we need to stand in that position. But out of that position, we need to grow to a place where we call experimental uh, walking out what we have received from Christ in terms of our conduct, our attitude and our behavior. And that produces our actions, and the actions will produce a place what we call maturity. And maturity is not perfection, because the word perfection means you're faultless. We, we can't be faultless because the Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And it's just by the mercy and the grace of God that through Jesus Christ that we're saved and placed and put in position with God. And once we have, we've been blessed, but we cannot stay in that blessed position of this confession alone. We now have to walk it out. And to walk it out simply means that we, we choose, amen, to walk by a governing function of God's word that helps us to display what we call uh, uh, Christ likeness. Now, uh, I need to make this point because this point is very important because some people get this confused. And when I say confused is that, remember, I say we move from a positional stand to experimenting the word by submission and obedience to the word. And now what we call walking it out. And now we're being governed and being led by the spirit of truth. Now, these actions are not motivated. In other words, our motivation for doing this is not to be accepted. Some people think if I do a lot of good, good things, then God will accept me. Well, that's not biblically true. Because you have to understand how you've been accepted has to be with through Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus said, I am the door. If any man enter in, he is what? He is saved, and he should go in out and find pastors. So our, our entrance into being accepted I mean, by God is through his son, Jesus Christ, not by good works alone. So therefore, it throws that out the window where some people, their motive of doing good is to believe that if I do enough good, then God will accept me. Well, that's not biblically true, as I've already said. 
one of the scriptures that I can verify that is found over in Romans chapter number 5, verses 1 and 2. And I'm going to read this out of the Amplified. I'll give you a chance to get there. But we're going to look at Romans chapter number 5, verses 1 and 2. Remember, I told you that our identity comes out of the word of God. And uh, I told you about the local assembly. And I thank God for the local assembly. Whatever your local assembly may be, it's, it's a good thing. Hopefully, if it's following the word. But our identity comes out of the word, not out of where we fellowship or where we go. Because our identity comes through Christ. And right now, God is trying to challenge the body of believers to get back in alignment with what the word of God says and not so much be controlled uh, by man's uh, interpretation of what we should be. Um, don't get mad at me. Don't throw no stones at me. But I'm just trying to tell you what I know that is true. Now, in Romans chapter number five, verses one and two, it says, therefore, I'm reading this out of the Amplified. Therefore, since we are justified, it said, acquitted and declared righteous. It says, and given right standing with God through faith. It says, let us grasp the fact that we have peace and reconciliation to hold and to enjoy and the peace of God through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So here it tells us this is our positional, how we get accepted by God is not through good works. How we get accepted by God has to deal with us accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And now he is now in control of my life. And because I believe the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and that I'm a sinner and I need to repent. And I have repented. Stop what I'm doing. Turn around. Do something different. Ask him to come into my life and then allow him to direct me and govern me through his word. So now I'm in what we call a positional truth. The positional truth puts me there through Jesus Christ. I hope that's explained. It's, it's very simple. But like I said, we got to make sure that our motive now for maturity and producing good works is not from that mindset. It has to be from the mindset now that I'm in the family. He requires for me now to be submissive to his word and to his will. And now I'm in the process of what we call renewing of my mind, the renewing of the mind. Now, as I said that, uh, the other thing is, is that uh, what happens is, is that when we move to the second part of our motivation being right, uh, when we clarify the first motivation is not correct because it's not through good works. The second is, and we've already said, we already put us in position with Christ through receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. And now because we're in position through Jesus Christ, his sacrifice, now we're in the position to showcase what we call maturity. And maturity really points to disciple, being discipled by Christ, discipleship. And a lot of times we get that twisted because we get people saved and get them discipled into a local assembly. But we don't get them discipled into their identity or who Christ says they are in terms of what God requires from them, because sometimes the requirement is lesser uh, because we're doing acts of duty within a local assembly and we don't understand that what God calls us to do in terms of the discipleship is to know how to operate in and out and through Christ and what he requires from us as believers. Now, what he requires from us as believers, as we already said, points to maturity, maturity. Now, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, and I'm going to read this in the Amplified. And I, I know a lot of times y'all say y'all you're in the Amplified a lot, but I just love the Amplified. Some people love different versions, but I love the Amplified. So 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 17, we're going to look at that. And it says here in first, second Corinthians 5 and 17, 5 and 17, okay. And then it says, um, therefore, if any person is engrafted, it says, in Christ. Now, now, remember, we talked about discipleship. Now, since once they've been engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is the new creature or new uh, a creature altogether. In other words, we're a new creature altogether once we receive Jesus Christ because our status has been changed. We're no longer sinners now. But now we're, we're part of the family of God. It says the old previous and moral and spiritual conditions have passed away. and Behold, the fresh and new has come. When it talks about the fresh and new, that means God wants to educate us in terms of what's required from us. Because without education and without the word injecting into your mindset, uh, you won't be challenged. So God challenges. And the challenge is, is that we don't do our will, but we do his will. Amen. Now. What I want to bring out here is that the actions are actions being motivated because now it's in the right place because we're part of the family of God. Now we got requires something from us because what he requires from us is now we move into a place to showcase what we call maturity 
in becoming disciples, becoming disciples of Jesus Christ, followers of Jesus Christ. OK, now three things you need to write down. One, maturity points to Christ likeness. Maturity points to Christ likeness. Some people think maturity points to how much you can do. And it's not. Maturity has a lot to do with how much you live. So maturity points to Christ likeness. Number two, Christ likeness points to behavior traits. Christ likeness points to behavior traits. Because some people think that they're anointed and they're gifted and they're mature in their gifting, but they're not mature in their character. Because your character is when you educate your will and your will is now in submission and obedience to God in terms of him teaching you how to have a different behavior than you would have controlling in your own self will. Now we have one maturity points to Christ likeness Two, Christ likeness points to behavior traits. Number three, these behavior traits are produced by denying oneself will. And that's powerful because some, this is the formula. And a lot of times people don't get the formula because remember what I said? We replace discipleship into a local assembly and not discipleship into Christ. Don't get mad at me. Come on now, because I've been through that myself. I understand you do need to disciple people into the local assembly. But there is a greater call that God said they need to get in order for them to survive and, and not to allow the enemy to deceive them and be a prey, I mean, be an instrument that the enemy can use. So here again, these three things I've talked about is what maturity points to Christ likeness to Christ likeness points to behavior traits, behavior traits. Number three, behavior traits are produced by denying oneself. And the greatest part of growing spiritually, you have to tell yourself no. You have to deny yourself. And that's a choice. You can't, you, listen, you, God's not going to make you do something that you, he already told you you need to do. Now it's up to you to do it. And if you can't do it, that's what prayer is for, that he will empower you to give you the strength so you can do it, so you don't put an excuse in the way of not doing it. Because when we do that, we become immature in terms of what God calls us to be and to do. All right? All right. Uh, a self, now listen, I, I looked at this as denying oneself. I put down this last week, and I think it's good to be repeated. Good that I repeat it. It says that a selfless love in surrendering our will, surrendering our will to fulfill the will of God the Father through the relationship of Jesus Christ our Lord. Remember, a selfless love. So denying oneself is really a selfless love in surrendering our will, our will to fulfill the will of God. And that the Father through our the relationship now, because the relationship requires obedience to the Son and also to what the Son is actually, actually requiring for us to do as believers. Okay. Here are some scripture examples that I want to go uh, talk about in terms of Christ likeness or spiritual maturity. I kind of flip both, both ways with that, but they're interchangeable because they do equal out one another. When I'm talking about Christ likeness points to spiritual maturity. So here, the first example I want to look at is found over in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verses 1 through 3. And 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, 3, and I'm going to read this. Uh, I think I'm going to read this. I'm not sure. I may do King James, but 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verses 1 through 3. Paul was writing to the church at Corinth. The word church means ecclesia, called out once. He's talking to born-again believers. And these believers uh, he was talking to uh, actually... They, they got their priorities out of order. When they got saved and born again, they were more concerned about the gifts, the gift that God's given us. And yes, we need to be concerned in how to operate in the gift uh, that God has given us, whether it's a gift of prophecy, whether it's a gift of giving, whatever that gift may be. But here he's telling them something that got out of place. And what he tells them, uh, let's look at the, um, uh, look at verse number uh, one. This is, we're going to read three verses. This is the example I want to talk about in terms of Christ likeness and spiritual maturity. For 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, 3, verses 1 through 3, I'll read it out of the King, King James Version. He says, I, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual. Remember, he's now he said, use the word spiritual. So really, he's pointing to their place of maturity. 
spiritual pointing to the place of immaturity. Let's follow the text. And then it says here, but as unto carnal, he says, even as unto babes in Christ. Now he tells them that they're in Christ, they're saved, but when it comes to their, their position is intact, but when it comes to their demonstrating uh, their maturity is now as babes. In other words, immature, okay? So here it says here, I fed you with milk and not with meat, and hitherto here, you were not able to bear it, so neither yet now are you able but he says, for you are yet carnal, he says here. For whereas there is envy, remember we talked about spiritual traits. I mean, remember spiritual maturity or maturity points to behavior traits. Listen, he says, you're envying, strife, and division. He said, are you not at carnal and walk as men? So what he's trying to tell them is that your position in Christ has been secure. Yes, you're saved. But you're experimental in terms of walking it out, and you're showing forth signs of immaturity. And immaturity, as we have said before, which is a powerful, powerful statement, and it's something that you need to uh, put your hat on. Remember, maturity points to Christ likeness. We talked about that. Christ likeness points to behavior traits, behavior traits, behavior traits. And then the third thing, behavior traits are produced by what? Denying oneself. So he's saying, telling them basically that the problem here is that you're unspiritual. So he doesn't, what, listen, because you quote scripture and because you know the Hebrew and the Greek and because you have great dialogue and because you're able to lay hands on the sick and pray for them and they get healed. Listen, that doesn't make you spiritual. You can still be unspiritual in this degree and what we're talking about here today because what this is talking about here today is that the problem is that they were unspiritual. They, they had that having the nature of the flesh under control of ordinary impulses. So in other words, the problem was is that they were unspiritual. How we know that? Because we know spiritual points to what? Maturity. Maturity points to what? Behavior traits. And he's identifying the behavior traits that hasn't been changed in an experimental way because they hadn't learned how to deny themselves and not allow their human impulses to direct them or drive them or govern them. Now, he calls them bathed in Christ. Now, it says here that this is having the nature of the flesh under the control of the ordinary impulses. Now, turn to Ephesians. Don't get, don't, don't just stay with me now. Turn to Ephesians because I'm trying to drive a point here. In Ephesians chapter number four and verse number 17 through 20, uh, and this is powerful because one of the things that really blessed me in, in terms of this understanding is that God requires all of us to come to a place of maturity in our conduct and our attitude and behavior. He's not going to allow us to excuse our way out when he has given us uh, direction, even through the scripture of God and the word of God to direct us so we know how to readjust ourselves to not to do our will, but his will. That's what repentance is for. Even when we mess up, we're still in the family of God because of our position, but we can still ask God to forgive us for our actions towards one another, or things that we've done towards people, or even our thoughts towards others that weren't right. We can get that corrected by making the adjustment because the adjustment has to learn how to do things from our way to his way. So there's going to be a lot of a trial and error during this time, but thank God for grace and mercy upon our life that we don't use the excuse to remain the same when God requires us to change and develop this place of maturity and experience how to walk in it. You and I as believers, this is the greatest time for us, amen, because God is trying to mature us into the place, not in our gifting and our ability, but mature us in our character and our conduct and our will to say, not my will, but his will be done. I'm preaching up here today. I hope you're getting something out of it today. And I'm trying to help somebody because you know what? We all need help. Because God doesn't look for perfection, but he does look for maturity. And maturity means that we're in trial and error about what we're doing. Thank God that we can ask God for forgiveness, as I said before. But then again, we have to remember we can get back to what he's telling us to do in terms of doing things not our way, but his way. And now in Ephesians 4 and 17, this is the other example I want to have because he's writing to the believers are here again, and they're still having problems. And the problem is, as I said before, and I, as this is a powerful statement that you, you and I, if we don't get uh, our, our mindset in the right direction in terms of understanding what we're dealing with, uh, as I said before, it's not a devil problem because he's already been defeated if we believe what the word of God says. 
But then the problem is, is that it's our mind. Our mind is not in the right place. And who gets our minds in the right place? We do as we allow the word of God to regulate us. Now, listen to what the word of God says here in Ephesians 4 and 17. He said, this I say, therefore, testify in the Lord that you henceforth not walk as Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. In the vanity of their mind. Then he says, having an understanding darkened. That means they had the understanding, but somehow this has been darkened. Being alienated except from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Now listen to what he says. Who being past feeling give themselves over to lasciviousness, to walk on all uncleanness and greediness. And then he says here, which is so powerful, he says, but ye have not so learned Christ. Could it be that we've been discipling into our local ministries, our local churches, but we still don't learn Christ? We still haven't learned him because to learn him, it says here, the problem is, is that they had not learned Christ. They were in Christ, but they didn't learn Christ. They didn't learn what was required from him. Remember, I said before, if you're not careful, our perception of God, amen, would be totally off. When I say totally off, because God, amen, he's not a policeman. He's not going to police us into doing right. Amen. He's going to cause us to do right by way of the choice and submission and obedience to his word. It's a love. It's a love because he gave his life. Therefore, we must give our life. And that's just that's but not unto death. Praise God, because he's already died for us. But we can live again. So I hope that's hope that's blessing you and giving you something that I think that will help you. And I hope that you're getting something out of this. Now, let's go a little bit further. Now, uh. If it said their lack understanding what is required from us being in a part of family, God is understanding. Now, I'm going to give you a scripture that I think that's going to bless you because it blessed me. And it's found over in Romans 8 and 28. 8 and 28. Now, in Romans 8 and 28, because you got to remember, God is he's dealing with you and me, amen, to get the right mindset that he is not a policeman, but God wants to govern us. God will never have you do something that's not going to benefit you, your family, and your loved ones, but sometimes it requires you denying yourself. And Romans 8 and 28, that's where I want to go. Romans 8 and 28. No, 8 and 29. I think I said 8 and 29, but I'll read 28. It says, and we know all things work together for the good to them that love God and those who are called according to his purpose. When you see love God, you need to understand when love God on our part, if we love God, then it's out of submission and obedience to his word. You can't yes, sir, you can't flip it and give words and say, God, I love you. And then your actions don't line up. Your actions don't line up. I said your actions don't line up. So when we say love, you have to understand that degree of love to God requires submission and obedience to his word. Even the Bible said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And he said the commandments that I give you are not grievance. And even when Jesus said, he said, I come that you may have life. And have it more abundantly. So really, the commandments of God through the New Testament truth are designed to help us live life a better way. A better way. Not live life out of the old mindset, selfishness, greed, hunger, all that other stuff that comes up. Envy and strife. That's a selfish and a carnal mindset because now we're governing ourselves and not allowing the word to govern us. Now, it says here in the 29th verse. Or read the rest of to them who are called according to his purpose. Now it says that we're called to his purpose. Remember I said when we understand our identity in Christ, we understand it goes beyond the local assembly because the word of God tells us that we're in the household of God. It tells us that we're part of the royal family. It tells us that we're the household of faith. And then it says we are his workmanship created under Christ Jesus. Woo, glory to God. That means God is working on you and I to bring us to a place of what his purpose is. His purpose is that you will come to a place of what maturity and maturity points to Christ likeness. Christ likeness points to the avenue of being discipled. To be discipled means your mind is being renewed. And now the focus is not so much on who you are, but who he is inside of you and what he has declared concerning what he is doing for you, in you and through you by way of his word and spirit. So therefore, it's as it's, it's us understanding that identity means that we're in a place of relationship with that which God has spoken. And the relationship is not just positional. It's now moving us to an experimental move with God. Woo, glory to God. 
Touch your neighbor. I don't know if you're by yourself, just touch the table. It's time to move with God because God wants to move you out of self and into his will so that the vision that you have is not of you, but is of what Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Now it goes on and says here, uh, as we read in the 29th verse, for whom he did foreknow, he said he did also predestinate predestined. In other words, there's a pre, there, there's a, a course that's been laid out for us so that we don't have to uh, uh, find our way. It, it, the way has already been given if we understand what the word of truth and the revelation of Jesus Christ is designed to do. Now, it says here, it says, for for, 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 he, for who he did foreknow, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, the image of his son, that we might be the firstborn among what, many believers. I like that because when it says being a part, uh, it says a part, uh, uh, it, not a part, but being according to his purpose. And then it goes to the first, first, listen, the image of his will. That's all I want. The image of his will, the image of his will. Remember, the will of God is the word of God. The will of God is the word of God. Do you not know sometimes when you read a good book and it's kind of written, you can see the image before it's on paper. But once you've getting it in, interjected into your mindset, and your thoughts, you can actually see the pictures come alive inside of the, your mind as you read. That's what the Word of God is living and active. He wants to get inside of you so you can understand that you're a king's kid. Not only that, but the king's kid has to grow up and to grow up to show forth what maturity and that we're doing out of the motivation of love and not doing it because I'm I'm want to I'm want to plead I'm want to be, be accepted of Him. You've already been accepted of Him. You're doing it because that's what it requires for you being in the kingdom of God and because God is trying to teach us how to walk in a different dimension. Now, I said all that to say, even as I read that scripture, there's another scripture I want to look at because this is a good one, too. Second Corinthians 3 and 18, because this talks about uh, our experimental, where we're going in terms of the maturity in Second Corinthians chapter number three and verse number 18 uh, let's turn over there, 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. It says, but we all with open face behold as in him a glass of the glory of the Lord. So we're looking at something just like you look in the mirror. If you look in the mirror and you see yourself, then you're missing what I'm talking about. If you look in the mirror of God's word, that word, amen, the mirror of God's word, when you look in the mirror of God's word, you, you're not supposed to see less of you and what God says who you are in terms of who the real image is. The image is Christ in you, the hope of glory. My goodness, that's some good stuff. When you understand that God wants you to get you looking past you to look at what he is in you, and then you require that image, amen, to reflect your conduct, your attitude, your action, uh, motive, your conduct, attitude, and behavior, which we call calf, and it moves you forward and it moves you, amen, to be a, what, a witness for Christ in demonstration. So it says here, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed. <laughs> You're being changed right now, if you know what I'm saying. You're being changed, but changed into the same image from glory. It says to glory, even as uh, by the spirit of God. And this, I, I, I like that because it's saying this word change is being to be transfigured, amen, in the process of that change. And you can't change unless you change your mindset. The mindset has to be changed. And uh, in other words, the mindset, amen, is has to be changed. So that's why the Bible says a lot about the renewing of the mind. I hope you're getting some, something out of that because we're talking about we've been blessed only to be regulated. And we, to be regulate means to be governed. Why are we governed now? Because the predestination of that governing brings us to a conduct of policy and actions. And why is that? It's, it's the affairs and the government of the kingdom of God in terms of how the children of the king should walk while we're here in the earth. Now, moving from the positional stand to the experiments and walking out, becoming regulated or be governed, uh, producing actions of maturity, which we talked about that. Last scripture we're going to look at today, and I'm hoping you're blessed by this word. I am because I got a lot of work to do and I'm still learning, amen, not to do my will, but his will. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect and I got it right. I'm saying that I understand he put a clause in there that if I do something wrong, contrary to his will, then I can ask for forgiveness. And if I ask, if I'm not trying to conceal it, conceal it is when you don't ask. Conceal it is when you make excuses and say, well, that's just who I am. And God just made me that way. And all the other foolish things that we say because we don't want to change. 
Change requires for us to have boldness and courage to understand that I can't change myself, but I'm going to submit myself to someone who can, and that's Christ in me, the hope of glory. So therefore, what I'm simply saying is when I my behavior traits are not right, and I'm acting like they were in 1 Corinthians, me envy and strife and division, then I need to stop what I'm doing. I need to ask God to forgive me, and then I need to get off that path and get on the path of his word and start doing something differently. That's that's maturity, my God. Growing from trials and errors to a place where you don't have to keep doing the same thing over and over again and making the excuse that that's what you just do and that's just who you are. That's not going to fly in the light of you showing your love and respect towards God because you're now in the kingdom of God and God requires all of his children to grow in the place of maturity. Let's look at Matthew 6 and 33 and we get ready to close out here in just a few minutes. I'm hoping that you're getting something out of this word and Matthew 6 and 33 and I want to talk about this a little bit here and, and Matthew 6 and 33, just that one verse. Uh, and it says here, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. One of the things I found out is so important that when we understand that God is a God of priority and there's certain things that God requires from us as believers uh, and even being in the family of God, there's an emphasis that you and I have to be very much uh, uh, mindful of. And one of them I'm giving you today, talking about the positional position that we're in. Uh, that's good because that's without the positional position, you can't go to the next step. And the next step is the place of maturity and showing forth the right conduct, attitude, and behavior through him educating us how to do that. Uh, if it's not in the right priority, then things get what they get, they get mismanaged. And when they get mismanaged, you, you misfunction. And when you misfunction, you can't operate the way God, where you want to, where he wants you to operate. And then you're in the place what we call confusion. How many know God is not the art of confusion? He wants to give us revelation to put things in perfect alignment. So here it says, but seek ye first. It says, seek first, the what? but seek is seek ye first, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. In the Amplified, it reads like this, and this is very simple, but seek and aim at striving after first his kingdom and his righteousness. This is his way of doing and being right. And then it says, then all these things taken together will be added unto you. Food, raiment, clothing, shelter, all that will come because that's the, the package that God uh, that he has for us because we're part, we inherit that because when we're in Christ, we get all those things. They come, so we shouldn't focus on that because those things will come, but they come from the result of us understanding who we are in the kingdom of God and what God requires from us. Now, well, I'm going to give you this formula. It's very simple, and we get ready to close out. Listen, you might want to write this down. Hold on to your hat. I mean, this is so simple, but it's so profound in what I'm getting ready to say. I said it's so simple, but it's so profound because God doesn't call the wise. He calls those a man that who are simple, not simple in terms of being uh, uh, um, um, foolish and things of that nature, but simple in terms of that the humility, the humility and surrender that I need help and everybody needs help. You can't make it on your home. So that's not very important for you and I to hear. Now, this is the statement that I'm going to read. Here it is. You need to seek to know. All right. You need to seek to know, then what you know, you do. <laughs> and what you do will help you live. Hold that up, preach. <laughs> Listen to what this says now, because remember, when Jesus said, I come to you, may have life and have it more abundantly. The kingdom is all about learning how to live in the kingdom while we're here in the earth. Some people got it twisted. We think it's all about serving. Jesus is not about, and the kingdom's message, and the gospel of the kingdom's message is all about living, 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 living his way while we're still here on the earth. Now listen, it says here, to seek to know, I gave you that, that's for free, it won't cost you anything. Here's another one. Then what you know, you do. And what you do will help you live. Masha, hey, it will, it will help you live. See, God wants us to live, I'm going to touch on this, maybe next week on, he wants us to live supernaturally, not to take away the natural, but put the super in front of the natural so we can live in dimensions of his counsel, and that counsel helps us to live above the curse that's in the land and upon the people because they're not in relationship with God. And the curse not means, doesn't mean voodoo and all that, it means to be disfavored. 
you, listen, this favor, because the favor comes through Christ, and when we understand Christ and we understand he requires us to walk in a place of maturity, then what happens is we begin to move in a different dimension. Now, let me close this out. I thought that was the last scripture. I've got one more to share with you. Experiencing, because the, the seeking means to experience. You're going to seek it out. And I made this statement last week, which is a powerful statement, is that when you get in the area of seeking, what happens is you're now probing. You're probing. I like probing and then finding something. See, experiencing in hope and finding. And when you find the truths of God's word and you take them and hide them in the treasures of your heart, Put them in your mind, allow them to get in your mouth, allow them to govern your walk. Amen. Then what happens is your life will take on another dimension that causes the favor and the blessings of God to come upon you. And then you live, my God, in a place where you live in a place where God is now manifesting favor in your life. Woo, glory to God. Favor in your life. I like to get favor, amen, and more favor of God because it comes through maturity, not through good acts. It comes through maturity and not good acts. How many of you would give your keys to your five-year-old and let them drive that car that you have that you're still paying, paying on? Come on. He's still your child. You love him, but it requires for him to have the keys to the car is maturity. Mm, mm, mm. Woo. That means sometimes we get it twisted. We think the devil is holding up the blessing that God has for you when really he can't hold it up if you're walking in a place of maturity, because God's not going to release it until you're mature. And mature has points to what? Your, your conduct, your attitude, behavior, the behavior traits, and you're not just faking it, doing it a while, and then not doing it. You live by it. Because remember what I said before, to seek is to know to what you know you do, and what you do will help you live. Now turn to James chapter number one and verse one and 25. I'm almost done. But I'm trying to hold myself down right now because the enemy is trying to keep the body of Christ from place for operating in a place of maturity because he knows that when we get mature, the blessings get released. They get released because God knows you can what well, you're mature enough to handle what he's going to give you and not mismanaging it, not mismanage it and take it to and squander it all upon yourself like the prodigal son. OK, they need that, need that long. James 1 and 25. All right. And I'm going to read this out of the in James 1 and 25, it says here, but who, so, who, but who looks carefully and faultless? This is James 1 and 25 now. I'm reading out the Amplify. I knew I'd slow down here because you know what? I'm just getting excited. So James 1 and 25, out of the Amplify. But he who looks carefully into the faultless law or the liberty of the law, talking about the word, and is faithful to it, and is faithful to it and preserves it into looking into it, being not a heedless listener who forgets, but an active doer, an active doer who obeys. An active, do, look, an active doer who obeys. Remember, maturity points to submission and obedience to God's word. And we do that not out of policing, we do that out of love. Because he loved me, and now I love him, and now I'm willing to give this up, even though I want it, but I'm going to give it up because it's not pleasing to him, and therefore I'm going to do that because it's all about his will being done and not mine. Then it goes on, it says here, it says, who, it says being an active doer, it says here, mm -hmm. let me go back here, whosoever looketh carefully into the faultless law and the liberty and is faithful to it, preserving and looking into it, being not a heedless lister, forgetting but an active doer who obeys. And then it said, he shall be blessed in his doing his life of obedience. And the life of obedience points to maturity. He who is mature shall receive the blessing. <laughs> he, that's, listen, he that's not mature can, can still get the blessing through mercy and grace, but there's some things that cannot be given because we haven't reached the place of maturity that God requires for us to reach. And what is he saying? That, that he wants to give us all that he has for us. And that's why that scripture is so important. Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. you and I don't want the partial blessing. I want the mature blessing that comes where now I can be governed over that in stewardship. And now I can use that as a place of a tool to help manage it, 
to help steer it, to help encourage and also build up somebody else because now he's using me as a conduit that he can trust that I'll do the right thing with that which he has blessed me with. So I hope you got something out of the word of faith today. This was a great time today. I hope you got something out of this word. There's a lot of correction in there too. Some of it you're like, mm, I don't know. And then some of it just hits you right where it needs to hit you to let you know that God still requires for us to be changed in the image of his dear son. And the grace and mercy upon our life is there because God is not looking for mature, I mean, not looking for perfection but he is looking for maturity. So I hope you got something out of the word of faith today. We love you guys. Appreciate you. I'm going to pray and seal this word today. Uh, before I do that, I just want to remind you, don't forget, if you've been blessed, to show your appreciation uh, just because it's something that we need as a ministry. Remember, uh, the money that we receive is going towards the ministry, and we've been able to save. We were able to do some things, but some things we want to do in the future. That's going to require finances. We do thank you for your prayers. We need that, prayer and support. And we want you to be faithful, need to be consistent in your giving. Don't slack off. Continue. And you've been doing a great job. So we just thank you for the offerings that we've been received. Don't forget, there's different ways you can give. Cash app. Uh, not only that, but there's, uh, uh, go to the website. That's www.kficc.com and hit the donate button. And uh, we just thank God for being a part of the service today and you being a part of the service. I want you to be encouraged today. For them, he foreknew, he did predestinate that we be conformed into the image of his dear son. And that's not going to happen overnight, but it's a, during a time of, of walking and out as God has blessed us to be able to do it even to this point in our lives. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for those who are here. Pray that you seal this word today. This word was designed to speak to the body of believers today, those who have received Jesus Christ and putting things in priority from the position that we have put in, amen, by faith. But then the experimental that we walk in by obedience and submission to your word. So, Lord, help us in the areas that we're having difficulty in, areas where we haven't really submitted, areas where we fight and still hold ground to what we believe, what we want to do. Help us to vacate that place and move to the place where you said we need to be so we can get on living life the way you have designed it. And also that we can experience some things through our obedience to your word out of love and relationship that things will begin to overtake us and bring us to a place of operating out of the supernatural. Amen. So, Lord, we thank you and give you praise. Bless all the youth that are listening today. Encourage and strengthen them. Bless them in their schooling, God. We pray for those who are already going back to college, God, that you bless them. Do a work in their hearts and their minds. Bless their minds to recall and remember. Bless the housewife and those who are home or the husband is home that's taking care of the kids. Or if it's somebody that's by themselves raising their children, keep your hand up on them. And Lord, we thank you for all that we've been able to say and do today. Thank you for this word of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. And we love you and we appreciate you. And you are blessed and highly favored. And we believe because of your seed being sown today, you're entitled to receive gifts and surprises discounts and dividends, divine favor upon your family, job promotions, and new jobs being created, divine health benefit, academic success. Our children are blessed. Our ministries are blessed. And not only that, our debt is paid off and our net worth is increasing. So this we receive upon our lives through our obedience today in Jesus' name. So be blessed and highly favored and we'll see you soon. So God bless you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.